ಸವಿತೂರವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಭರ್ಗೋದೇವಶ್ರಧೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಫೋರ್ ಕೈವಲ್ಯ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಕೈವಲ್ಯ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಇಜ್ ಎ ಮೈನರ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಖಂಡ ಇಂಟ್ರೋಡಕ್ಟರಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ದಿಸ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಟೀಚಸ್ ದಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ವಿಚ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಎಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸಿಪೇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಮೈಗ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಕಾಲ್ಜ್ ದಿಸ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಸತ್ರಾವುದ್ರಿಯ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಲಿ ಎ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಜಿಗ್ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಬಲ್ ಟು ರುದ್ರ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಪರ್ಹೆಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸತ್ರಾವುದರಿಯ ನೇಮ್ಲಿ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಪ್ರಾಪಾಠಕ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ಥ್ ಖಂಡ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಂಡ ಆಫ್ ದ ತತ್ರಿಯ ಸಂಹಿತ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ವಿದ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ರುದ್ರ ಮನ್ ಯವೆ ಹಿ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸತ್ರು ದರಿಯ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸತರ್ ಉದರಿಯ ವಿಚ್ ರುದರಿಯ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನಿರ್ಗುಣ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಡ್ ಬರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಸಗುಣ ಆರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಡ್ ಬರ್ಮ ದ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಬರ್ಮ ಸತ್ರುದರಿಯ ಸತ್ರುದರಿಯ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಕಮೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ರೆಸಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಖಂಡ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ನಾಥ ಶಿವಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಎವರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಸತ್ರುದರಿಯ ವಿಚ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಕರ್ ಜಿಂದ ತತ್ರಿಯ ಸಂಹಿತ ಕೈವಲ್ಯೋ ಕೈವಲ್ಯೋಪನಿಷದ್ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಅತ್ ಅಸ್ವಲಾಯಿನೋ ಭಗವಂತ ಪರಂ ನಿಷ್ಠಪುಂ ಸಮೇತೋ ವಾಚ ಅದೇಹಿ ಭಗವನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾಂ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ಸದಾ ಸದ್ಭಿ ಸೇವ್ಯಮಾನ ನಿಗುಢಾಂ ಯಯಾಚಿರಾತ್ ಸರ್ವಪಾಪಂ ವೈಪೋಹೈ ಪ್ರಾತ ಪರಂ ಪುರುಷಂ ಯಾತಿ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ದೆನ್ ಡಿಡ್ as valaina approached the lord parmeshwar thin and said do thou o lord teach brahma vidya the most excellent always resorted to by the righteous quiet hidden by which the wise man before long seeks of all sin and reaches the purusha spirit greater than the great then after the acquisition of the four qualifications sadhana vij number 1 viveka discrimination between the real and the unreal number 2 vairagya indifference to enjoyments here and hereafter number 3 one sama control of manas manas means mind number 2 dama subjugation of the senses subjugation here means control of the senses number 3 uparati abstention from all formal religious rites accompanied with the renunciation of all desire fourth titiksha endurance fifth samadhana ability to fix manas on one single object for a long time samadhana here means concentration of mind 
नंबर सिक्स श्रद्धा फेथ इन द टीचिंग ऑफ द वेदा एंड ऑफ द टीचर फोर्थ इज मुमुक्षुत्वा ए लॉन्गिंग फॉर लिबरेशन असुलायना द सन ऑफ असुला ए टीचर ऑफ ऋग्वेदा परमेस्थिन लिटरेरी मीनिंग डवेलिंग इन द सुप्रीम एबोड बर्मा द फादर ऑफ ऑल लॉन ऑल्सो इज द पिता मह और ग्रांड फादर असलायना अप्रोच बर्मा इन डू फैशन एंड पुट इन ए क्वेश्चन विद व्यू टू लर्न ब्रह्म विद्या द डिवाइन विजडम ब्रह्म विद्या ब्रह्म विद्या मीन्स द नॉलेज ऑफ द सेल्फ द नॉलेज ऑफ आत्मा नॉलेज ऑफ ब्रह्मा नॉलेज ऑफ रिलेशन बिटवीन आत्मा एंड ब्रह्म सो ब्रह्म विद्या दैट नॉलेज विच लीड्स टू एन इंट्यूटिव परसेप्शन ऑफ ब्रह्मा द वन इनफिनिट इन टाइम एंड स्पेस this brahma vidya exist in the hearts of all beings only it is quite concealed from view by avidya it is resorted by those who have subjugated the body and the senses and it is well guarded from those who are not qualified for it see for qualification the mind and intellect of a sadhaka must be pure his vasanas must be eliminated he should he should discard eradicate his ego then only he becomes eligible for this type of spiritual knowledge the wise man he who has realized that his own true self is dharma all sin all cause of pain which may be summed up in agyana and its vasanas or latent impressions the desires which are not fulfilled they carry on gathering in our chitta and these gathered desires subtle impressions sanskaras known as vasanas these vasanas are the main hindrance in the path of a sadhaka who is pursuing his sadhana for self realization and liberation these vasanas must be eradicated then only the person will be realizing his self greater and avakya avyakta which is the cause of the whole universe is great and the atman avyakta means which cannot be explained which cannot be described who is hidden the supreme lord who is the seat and object of the highest wisdom is even greater than avyakta he is called purusha because he is all pervading threefold path tasmay se ho vach pita mahesche sharda bhakti dhyan yog dvehi ne karmana ne parjaya dhanen tyage naike amritva manashu this is second shloka of amrita bindu upanishad meaning and to him verily he the grand sire said do thou know it by means of faith devotion and meditation not by work not by progeny not by wealth put by renouncement the great ones attained immortality the grand sire bharma the lotus seated is the father of daksha and other prajapatis who are the fathers of the whole universe 
because brahma vidya cannot be directly said by word of mouth brahma transcending all speech and thought the teacher proceeds first to teach the means by which it can be attained there are three means of attaining brahma vidya number 1 shraddha the firm faith that there is something beyond the visible and that what the scriptures and the teachers teach concerning the invisible is nothing but truth number 2 bhakti complete devotion to the guru and to the lord who is the goal of the path number 3 dhyana deep meditation and unbroken current of the thought of atma uninterrupted by any other thought endued with shraddha and bhakti the aspirant attains brahma vidya by practice of meditation like shraddha and bhakti sanyasa the renouncing of all sacrificial rites and everything dear in the world constitutes a means of attaining brahma vidya by renunciation alone the great sages acquired the ancient wisdom and attained immortality without renunciation no intuitive or direct knowledge of atma can be attained without renunciation it is at best only an indirect knowledge of the reality that can be attained when the aspirants resort to complete renunciation the goal of the path prayan nakam nihitam guhayam vibhrajate yad yato यद तयो विशंति वेदांत विज्ञान सो निश्चरतार्था सन्यासा सयोगात यत्तह शुद्ध सत्वा मीनिंग दिस इज थर्ड श्लोका मीनिंग दैट व्हिच इज हायर देन स्वर्गा दैट व्हिच सीटेड इन द केव शाइन्स रेस्प्लेंडेंट हियर केव मींस द स्पिरिचुअल हार्ट दैट do those aspirants enter who by vedantic wisdom have well ascertained the thing whose aspirants whose minds have been purified by sanyasa yoga see here we have to understand there is a difference when we say vedanta in vedanta we have to understand that vedanta means atma god and prakriti nature they are the same matter and atma they are the they are the integrated part of brahma but non vedantic principle the state that brahma atma and matter they are distinctly separate so we have to understand that the word absolute means there is only one entity that is brahma rest all atma and matter they are the part and parcel of brahma fourth is shloka they do those aspirants enter who by vedantic wisdom have well ascertained the thing those aspirants whose minds have been purified by sanyasa yoga fourth stanza fourth verse te brahm lokesu prant kale pramrtat primuchyanti sarve meaning in the region of brahma at the last moment of papara they all become released from the great the immortal the aspirants of unsullied minds those who have having renounced the world by mighty effort attained an intuitive realization of brahma 
become while still alive on earth one with their own immortal blissful atma far transcending swarga if by any obstacle such as a desire to enjoy the pleasures of brahma loka those aspirants who after renouncing all world as something not worth longing for have ascertained the nature of brahma by the study of the scriptures fail to attend in their earthly life to a complete realization of their identity with brahma they go after death to the regions of brahma the demi urge and there the as well as brahma will be completely liberated at the last moment of para the great cycle of brahma's life that is at the time of parlaya or cosmic dissolution not before and become one with the absolute brahma contemplation of the nirguna brahma so brahma is having two formed one is nirguna brahma and saguna brahma the shruti now proceeds to describe here shruti means vedas the shruti now proceeds to describe the yoga by which he who dwells in the heart of all may manifest himself to the disciple in his own heart विविक विविक्त देशे च सुखासनस्थ सुचि समग्री शिर शरीर अत्याश्रमस्थ सखिलेन्द्रिया निरुद्ध भक्तया सब गुरु प्रणम्य श्लोक नंबर फाइव हर्तुपुंडरीक विरज विशुद्ध विचंत मध्य विशुद्ध विशोक मीनिंग at a retired spot seated in an easy posture pure erect being the neck the head and the body leading the highest order of life restraining all the sense organs and having saluted his own guru in devotion regarding the heart lotus on stand and quite pure and in its center contemplating him who is free from all taint and grief sixth shloka sixth stanza achintyam vyakt manant roopam shivam prashant amritam brahm yonim tatha dimadhyant vihin mekam vibhum chidanand roopam adbhutam who is unthinkable the unmanifest whose forms are endless who is the good tranquil immortal who is the womb of dharma and who is devoid of a beginning middle or end the one who is intelligence and bliss the formless the wonderful for the attainment of brahma the aspirant should practice yoga in the following manner he should resort to a clean and lonely place and when there is nothing to disturb the mind he should sit on a comfortable seat he should then perform all the internal and external ablutions prescribed by the shastras without any feeling of trouble firmly seated in a regular posture such as padmasana he should hold erect his head neck and body he should become a sanyasin of the highest or pramhansa order restraining the mind and all the senses he should bow down to his own guru with bhakti as laid down by law regarding him equal to they was if not even superior to them he should then regard the heart lotus as perfectly pure free from all rasic and tamasic dirt 
free from all passions and delusions, etc., containing within it the orbs of the sun, the moon, and the fire. Within it he should contemplate the pra, parameswara, the unmanifested and the unthinkable, as transcending all speech and thought, the infinite, the good, the bliss itself, free from mala, free from birth and death, the one, self-luminous, endued with all powers, the source of all Vedas, the formless, quite a wonderful being, contemplation of the Saguna Brahma. If the mind cannot rise to the thought of Parmeshwara as such, he should contemplate him in his Saguna or conditioned aspect as made up of the Lord and his spouse. Uma Sahayam Parmeswaram Prabhum Trilochanam Neel Kanthe Prashantam This is stranger number 7. Dhyatva Manvir Gachati Bhut Yonim Samast Saksim Tamsam Parastat Meaning, him whose health made his Uma who is the Supreme Lord, mighty, three-eyed, dark, naked, and serene, having meditated thus, the sage reaches him who is the womb of all beings, the witness of all, transcending darkness, Uma, Shiva's helpmate, that is the Brahma Vidya, which protects Shiva from such assailants as passion, love, etc. Or Uma may refer to the goddess Bhavani associated with Shiva, the Lord, conceived as half man and half woman, Ardhanarishwar. The aspirant should contemplate Uma, the divine lady spoken of in the Kena Upanishad as an Incarnation of Brahma Vidya as a helpmate of the Supreme Lord conceived as man. This Divine Lady is the prot prototype of all other beings of the female sex who may be looked upon as her mere reflections. She is the Divine Being composed of all potencies, shaktis, and all principles that was. It is by her grace that. All living creatures, including devas, attain to swarga or moksha in future and to worldly happiness on earth. By her mere glance, Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, Sankra and other devas exist or cease to exist, possessed of a high and broad chest, wide loins, slender waist, moon-like face, fish-like eyes black hair, the Divine Lady, beautiful in every limb of the body, cannot but bewitch the heart of her Divine Lord, be decked with a jeweled, jeweled belt in her waist with bracelets in the wrist, arms and ankles, ankles with garlands of pearls and other jewels, jewels round the neck with an ornamental crown and earrings and with many other jewels she shines with incomparable splendor though the mother of the whole world yet she never looks more than 16 years old associated with such a divine lady is he the divine spouse even more perfect in all attributes the overlord of Burma and other mighty beings bedecked with all sorts of ornaments, clad in the tiger's skin or quite naked. His whole body is smeared with ashes. He wears a garland containing a number of Brahma skulls, skulls, Brahma skulls with a digit of the moon shining in his clotted hair brilliantly 
white like cow's milk he wears the ganges on the head and puts on a smiling face he is a thousand times more beautiful than kandarpa the god of love and a thousand times more brilliant than the sun himself without birth and death he is the cause of the birth existence and dissolution of the universe his face is as handsome as the full moon and he has the sun the moon and the fire for his eyes every part of the body is very beautiful his neck being shaped like a conch he has arms extending down to the knees and wears a serpent as the sacred threat yajna upavita over the body he is seated in padmasana with the eyes resting on the tip of the nose he is called mahadeva and vama deva the highest and the most gracious god he is is the first guru of all gurus he is self luminous he is bliss in a sense he is without a second from him was born the hirnagarbha the father of the viras and all the other devas the aspirant whose mind is not equal to the contemplation of the nirguna dharma the absolute should resort to yoga and contemplate the Parmeshwara as described above as dark necked as the lord of the universe as the destroyer of all sins as seated in the heart lotus or in the sun or in the fire or in the moon or in the kailasa or some other mountain when the manas of the yogin who contemplates the divine being in this form as half man and half woman becomes steadfast then he realizes shiva that wonderful supreme divine being who is the cause of the universe and yet who is devoid of the whole or any part of the universe who transcends all speech and thought as his own true self who is above all delusions and never tainted by it who is a near witness in the buddhi of all beings while in himself unconnected with it so i complete this video here next video we'll start with heading brahma is all brahma is all thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel namaskar my dear friends